Shalom. Welcome to Six and Six. Six days a week for six minutes, and you got a full idea from the Lubavitcher Rebbe. And we left you in suspense the last time, and we wanted to ask a question. He's saying that why is the gear, the convert called gear shin is gayer, the convert that converts? Really, it should be the non you that converts. And here's the amazing, amazing idea where a Jewish person is very special. It's not like, well, if I want to be Italian, then I would move to Britain, I'll be a British person and learn English. No, when a person comes from a non-Jew to a Jew, they're actually having a very, very special elevation in their neshama. It's not only in their body, not that they can eat some bagels and lox and be a good Jew, but besides that, that they have a, besides that, the main part is really, is they have a neshama, a Jewish, holy, godly soul inside of them. Now, you can't just, like I say, change from Italian spaghetti and to eat uh, chips and fries in Britain and say, okay, now I'm a good British person and speak English. But it, where does it come from that you can't just make a godly soul inside of yourself? I mean, you have to convert in the proper way, but what does that uh, do for your soul? And the answer is, very Kabbalistic, that this con convert, that obviously a uh, convert by definition, he was non-Jewish before he converted, but he actually had a Jewish neshama. He had a Jewish soul inside of him, him or her. And said that that person always was Jewish, no matter who they were, and that's what they were always. I, you know, they obviously had Jew and non-Jewish parents, and and obviously they weren't living like a Jew, but something inside of them had an incredible feeling that they always were Jewish inside of themselves. Many, many stories. We don't have the time for now. Maybe another time. But, you know, these stories of incredible converts that they felt something was lacking or missing in their life, and then they became Jewish. And this is actually our answer now, exactly I just said, that even though that they were non-Jewish before they were converted, but nevertheless they had a Jewish soul. So just like what we said with a child, the child didn't all say, okay, now I'm going to act like a Jew. It's my time for my bar mitzvah. They had to be educated before and to know what to do. There's a lot of laws and a lot of customs that a Jewish person has to know before the bar mitzvah. They look to read Hebrew in the air, for example. So it's the same idea with a convert, even though you say, well, it was totally non-Jewish and now he's totally Jewish. Yes, that's true, but there was something always inside of them that it made them Jewish also that they had a Jewish feeling, uh, like we said, a Jewish soul. So when it came that they converted between first Passover and second Passover, okay, okay, now you're Jewish. What kind of makeup exam? You were non-Jewish. Like we said before, a non-Jewish person doesn't have to bring a Paschal lamb. But since he converted in retrospect, we see that they always had a Jewish soul inside of themselves. And therefore, it's not a makeup exam. It's just part of little bit of their education and their feeling that they always felt to be Jewish. And that's the answer for the idea that a child still has to, it became bar mitzvah between the two Passovers, still has to bring a Pesach Shania, Paschal Am on the second Passover, and also a convert, even though we're saying the question would be, but they weren't converted yet. They were Jewish. The only after the first Passover. What's the makeup exam? They didn't have to bring the first Passover. But it really, they had a Jewish neshama soul inside of them, and therefore they were really Jewish inside of themselves all along. So that's a major idea, and we're going to have a conclusion tomorrow with the sixth part, what it means to us in the, in the exile, where we don't have any Passover uh, and he uh, said, we don't have the first Passover, we don't have the second Passover. We always hope to have them with the Mashiach. In the meantime, we're in exile. We'll conclude it with a beautiful lesson tomorrow.